Hey, Sabrina, I can take that one. Hey, everybody, my name is Jonathan Recinto. I work on the captive management side and business development at Risk Management Advisors. Uh, so the Form 886 stems from the notice 2016-66 that the IRS issued identifying 831B micro captives insurance companies as transactions of interest. Uh, the IRS just wants to investigate to see if the captives are abusing the tax benefits or not. Uh, there are three initial parts to criteria, and one of them is 20% or more of the captive is owned by the insured company or the same family that owns the insured company. Uh, two, uh, claims and expenses are less than 70% of premium revenues. And three, uh, transfer of funds, uh, such as loans or investments uh, back to the insured company or the family group that owns the insured company. Uh, the IRS identifying 831B captives participating in transactions of interest is actually better than being identified as an illicit transaction because in an illicit transaction, the IRS has identified the, and determined that the tax abuse by the captive has been determined. And whereas the transaction of interest, uh, IRS just wants to know more about the captive. By gathering more information, they want to know the good and the bad to weed out the bad players who are abusing the tax benefits. Uh, one thing also to note is that the IRS already knows about 95% of the information that is completed and filed in Form 8886 uh, based upon the 1120 PC captive tax return. So by filing the Form 8886, it just makes it easier for the IRS to find all the information in one place, but they aren't really getting any new information from it. So who has to file Form 8886? It'd be the captive, uh, the insured entities, the owners of the insured entities. And it's also very important to file the forms timely, either with or without extension, uh, because failure to file the form 86 timely can result in huge penalties. It can be as high as $50,000 for the entities and $10,000 for the individuals each year.